which YAML Go package module library should you use? Uh, I got this question yesterday. Somebody said, why are you using, and I quote, the out-of-date YAML v3 instead of using the Kubernetes YAML parser? So this video hopefully it will be short, but I'm going to answer the question. The reason I'm going to use I use YAML v3 is because it's the most modern, it's the most well established, and it has the least amount of drama. And that last one is kind of an interesting one uh, because the drama actually exists between the Kubernetes project and the YAML project. So let's go into that. So here I have the different code bases. So right off the bat, you'll see uh, the github.com slash go dash YAML, which by the way, this is not the name of the package. The package name is go pkg.in slash yaml.v3, which uses the original method of um, distinguishing between different versions of, of packages and modules in Go before modules were a thing. So that's why it's there. And, but, the, but the definitive location for the source is go yaml slash yaml. That's what we're looking at here. Uh, when you look at the tag here, um, whoops, let's go in here. Now you'll see. Okay, so this is using, you see how the branch is v3. This is using the branching method of distinction that is recognized by Go. Uh, Go modules are very hard to understand for a lot of beginners uh, and veterans alike. But this gives us kind of a place to look uh, for, for that. Um, so what are we looking at? We're looking at the source code for YAML v3. Uh, the YAML package enables Go programs to comfortably encode and decode YAML values. Uh, it was originally developed by Canonical and then picked up. Uh, and for that reason, you will see a lot of weirdness in here. Um, and that is for a different video. I've done my own. There's rwxrob slash YAML library to deal with other stuff here. I'll make a separate video on that. Make sure you watch that video. But the, while I was working on that, I was asked why I wasn't using the other one. So in, in window three over here on Kubernetes, we have the source code for github.com slash Kubernetes uh, dash sigs slash thanks for the follow slash YAML. And the first thing you might notice just coming into this thing is that you have a go yaml.v3 and a go yaml.v2. Like, well, what is up with that? And if you open up the readme, you'll see what's up. Um, YAML marshalling and unmarshalling support for Go. Here's the build status, blah, blah, blah. This is a wrapper. This is very important information. This Kubernetes project, which is called Kubernetes SIGs, this is a sub project, special interest group for Kubernetes, that focuses on this particular thing, parsing YAML reliably for Kubernetes. This says, and as it says in the introduction, this is a wrapper around Godash YAML YAML designed to enable a quote, better way of handling YAML when marshalling to and from structs. That better way. That, that statement about it being a better way is the reason that there is drama between the Kubernetes project and the YAML project. And we'll get to that. So in short, this library first converts YAML to JSON using Go YAML and then uses uh, JSON Marshall and non Marshall to convert it. Okay, so this there's a lot of problems with this because this introduction, this this is extremely confusing, my friends. And in fact, it took me quite a while to undo it. When I went to the website, and let's do that now. When I went to the website, where are you, GitHub, 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 GitHub. All right, let's do this. Uh, GitHub.com slash, was it, SIGs something? Kubernetes SIGs. Okay, Kubernetes SIGs, there it is. When I 
when you first go out to the website for this project, you'll immediately notice that it is forked from God's YAML, which is, by the way, a really awesome package. But it is not a base YAML parser. This thing has a dependency itself on the underlying YAML v3. And, and this is kind of hard for beginners to figure out how to navigate it. If I were to draw a map, which I'm not, <laughs> but if I were, I tell you what, let's do, let's do it. Let's air draw. We'll air draw it. Okay. So, so over here you have the Kubernetes project, right? And over here you have, well, sort of way up here, you have the YAML v3 project, which is an extension of the YAML v2 project, which originally came from Canonical. Okay. And then after that, you have the gods project, the one, the one that you just saw that it was forked from. And this is extremely misleading. If you're looking at the Kubernetes project, you're like, oh, this project is a fork of gods slash YAML. That is actually true. It's also consistent with the introduction, which is extremely hard to understand because let's read it again. This is wrong. Okay, um, this introduction, here it is. This is, okay, I, I take it back. I take it back. Here it is right here. Kubernetes says YAML is a permanent fork of the God's YAML project, which is an encapsulation around this project. So what is unclear, in fact, this just confused me while making this video, even now, is like, what the hell is this thing? What the hell am I looking at? Kubernetes SIGs YAML, should I use it? Number one is the first question. But before I even ask that, answer that question, I have to know what the hell it is. Well, I'll tell you what it's not. Kubernetes SIGs YAML is not an original project. As it says right there, Kubernetes SIGs YAML is a permanent fork that, by the way, is not very well maintained. It has not been kept up to date. I happen to know, and it is a fork of a project that was designed, if you can go look at it, to wrap the actual YAML project. This is so important right here, all right? So it is wrapping the official YAML parser, which is YAML v3, the one that I have been using and that I have been modifying, not modifying, but you know, adding helper support. So, so let me just, I have to come back to this because the statement was rather in my face the other day. And they said, and I, and again, I quote, why are you using an outdated YAML module for your helper? And as you can see now, I am not, I am using the standard YAML package and module from which these others have diverted or that they have wrapped. In fact, to use the exact language of the package, this is a wrapper around YAML v3 designed to enable a better way of handling YAML when marshalling to and from structs. Most importantly, allowing the use of the JSON tags so you don't have to have YAML and JSON tags. And that is kind of convenient, but it is a wrapper. It is an extension of what I agree that they would probably agree is the standard, which is go-yaml, yaml. In other words, go pkg. Here's how you do the import. Uh, so here, the, the one from Canonical, okay, which is, by the way, and it's not even original. It's an extension. Uh, it's, a, it's an implement, a go implementation of a C library that was generated. That is a lot of history, but but I think the important part to take away from this here we are looking at the at the Kubernetes one again, is that the standard that is used for Kubernetes is a fork of a wrapper for the actual YAML module, this standard module. So I want to just I'm going to say it again. I can't get tired of saying this. The Kubernetes project has decided to use a module that is two dependencies away from the standard. And on top of that, add a third problem divergence by not maintaining its vendor copy of it. 
and by the way, since we're on the topic of vendors, do you notice something interesting here? Again, this is the Kubernetes version. Let's, let's look at some other problems with it. The first, look at this, 1.12, right? 1.12. And if you were looking at this, you'd be like, does this even use GoYaml? You're like, well, not according to the requirement here. You know why? Because they vendored it incorrectly. Uh, that's not fair. They vendored it in a way that you would do in 1.12. They did not have a vendor directory, right? In 2024, if you are not doing GoMod vendor to vendor your stuff, you're doing it wrong. GoMod vendor creates what is now become a standard. The standard being thou shalt put all your vendor stuff in the vendor directory. All the go tooling notices this and it's now no longer, it's no longer a thing. So, so you would have no way to know that go yaml v3 and v2 are actually being vendored, vendoring being the inclusion of something. Um, and there they are, they are included, they are vendored. Um, and you know, they're, they're not even doing it in a standard way. So, you know, if there, if there's one thing you can conclude here, the Kubernetes project is way, way behind and they have no intention of keeping up. And that leads into the drama. And I don't know all the details. I honestly can't even remember where I read it. So I'm just telling you that straight up. But as I remember, and this was a long time ago, as I remember the Kubernetes project had, there was a breaking change made by the YAML team uh, in a non-breaking version of YAML. I think it was V2. And, it was, and they changed the number of spaces in the indentation. I believe that was it. And it broke. It actually broke uh, the Kubernetes project. And they got mad. And you can probably find the issue out there. And they went ahead and they, re, they re, redid it. They brought it. Uh, they actually reverted the change. It's very rare that they did that. And they I don't know what they did with the version numbers or something like that. But as far as I know, and again, don't quote me on this, I believe that was the source of the drama where that caused things like this to be written in the readme of the Kubernetes YAML project. Um, the decision to permanently fork this other project, which, you know, is kind of interesting. It didn't just permanently fork this project. It also permanently forked Go YAML v3 and Go YAML v2. So think about that for a second. That, that first, you don't even know what is. So it's, you would never know that. You would have to really, really dig to understand what is actually going on in this Kubernetes project with regard to YAML. Because you're like down here, it's like, what's up with this Go YAML thing? You know, you says it's a permanent fork of this, but that means it must be also a permanent fork of this, right? And you would, there is no mention of that, but by finding it, by looking at it over here and then looking at the build scripts, you can figure out that that's what they're doing. They're building from a not, this isn't in a submodule either. This isn't a git submodule. This is just a random directory that's been copied that contains all of the source at some random point in time, which shall not be known. We do not know what time, when, which version this is. We have no idea. There we go. This package is a fork of the Go YAML library is intended solely for consumption by Kubernetes. In this fork, we plan to support only critical changes required for Kubernetes, such as small bug fixes and regressions. Large, larger general purpose feature requests should be made upstream to the Go YAML project. We will reject any such changes for this fork unless we are pulling them from upstream. All right. Now let's come back to the question. I'm not, I'm sorry, the statement that was made at me while I was doing my thing. The statement was, why would you use the out of date non Kubernetes version when there's a much more recent version? Does this look recent to you? The only time anybody would even make that statement would be if they had not read the readmes from this package. So yeah, I'm a little bit ranty there because right there, it tells you the very reason I would never look at this thing ever and neither should you this package, this random copied code from the project that had, we don't even know what version it is. 
is based on the fork 3.0.1, which I guarantee you is no longer accurate. And they have only been making uh, individual bug fixes and regressions, which you cannot know without looking it up in the commit history of this project. That means that they have decided to fork for whatever reason, because they do not want to deal with the changes of the other project. And that is their prerogative. But why on earth would I ever build a dependency on a project that has decided willfully to fork the standard project for YAML and also say we have no intention of ever updating except for the changes we want? Why would I ever want to use that in any project that I build that ever uses YAML? Unless I agreed with the Kubernetes team that the YAML team doesn't know what they're doing because that's the implied statement here. The implied statement is we don't like the YAML project, so we're going to fork it and go. We're going to, you know, fork you. <laughs> we're going to go do our own thing. So the answer to why I am using the standard YAML project is because I want my code to be standard. I want it to have upstream changes to the official YAML v3 project, which is overwhelmingly used as a dependency in every project on the planet besides Kubernetes. And I'm going to take this moment to say what I have said many times. Kubernetes code is shit. It is the worst code I have ever seen for any major project in Go. Sorry. Do not look at Kubernetes as a way to write Go. It is one of the worst projects ever. You want a lot of good projects? Ask me, I'll tell you. There's Kind. There's uh, Argo CD is a phenomenal project. There uh, is uh, Go Releaser. There, there are so many awesome, awesome Go projects to learn how to write Go code well. The Kubernetes code base is not it. In fact, run screaming from the Kubernetes code base. It is horrible. It's one of the most horrible Go code bases I've ever seen in my entire life. So for the Go project, for the, for the Kubernetes project to say, oh, we, we know better than the YAML project. No, I don't trust them at all. They've already destroyed their reputation just by the code they released. It's absolute shit. And, and I can't believe the whole world is dependent on it. Honest to God, I really can't. That's probably a good place for me to stop. <laughs> Talk to you later.